Al, it's time to go back to the past and interact with spooky past ghost children. Spoopy. Too spooky. Do a little dad squat at them. Too spooky for me. Yes, exactly. I, I get spooked by this, the simplest of things. Apparently, that is the, the case. <laughs> oh, boy. Rip. <laughs> uh, hello, welcome to this week's episode of Jared and Al Watch Love Life Superstar. I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. We are discussing a season one, episode number 11, called Once More at That Place. You know, that place. That place. Not that place, but that place. Wink. This this here place. This here place. Uh, so this episode basically went down as I thought it was going to last week. Yep, you nailed it. I did nail it. Knocked it out of the park. As you do. Jared's Baseball. good at this stuff. So yeah, we got, uh, we got a lot of what we talked about last week as the preview mm -hmm. but uh we begin this week and the girls have to figure out if they pass the regionals yes with the rap battle only eight groups get through regionals mm -hmm. and they are looking on the website and then the website crashes so they're like ah panic wait what was the really good group saying it's like neo something Neo Mutant Girls. Neo Mutant Girls. What a good title. Which is apparently a reference to original Love Live. It is? Yeah, apparently there is a group called Mutant Girls in the fourth episode of season two of Love Live. Oh my god. It's pretty good. Bring back George. Bring back George. Neo George. Neo George. George 2. <laughs> George, George, George of the Jungle. <laughs> So yeah, they're they're scrolling through the list and they like the website freezes on them because the server loads too bad, and uh, the gals from Sunny Passion message them. They're like, "Hey, congrats! Let's do well. Let's do a good good song." They're like, "Huh?" Huh? And then eventually the site loads again and they're all scrolled out and hey, they made it through. Yay! Yay! Good job. Uh, the rest of their class gives them a little celebration. They're like, "Yay! Congrats! You did it! Woo!" And then they hear over the, the loudspeaker, Will the girls of the School Idol Club please report to my office? I repeat, the girls of the School Idol Club please report to my office. They're like, what's going on? And then we learn that Ren knows nothing about computers. And then Ren's like, <laughs> <laughs> I have done a great error, a bad thing. She, she went to the Forbidden World. <laughs> she really did. And clicked something naughty. She did. And was very freaked out and thought that she got caught and was going to be expelled from school for looking at sensitive content. At, at school. At school. Rip. So they go to the director's office and they're like, the director's like, you guys is okay? You look like you ate something bad. And they're like, <laughs> no, we're good. And everyone's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to look at it. I'm sorry. And she's like, huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, the director's just like, I got a thing from Kanad and Chisato's elementary school. They wanted you to go sing for them. And Ren's like, what? Wait, what? Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> hey. Glad you didn't follow what I did. Yeah. <laughs> and then the rest of them are like, oh, cool. We'll go do that. But Kanan's like, I don't know about this. We. They go up to practice. They're doing the whole stretchy bit. Cuckoo's struggling, because of course Cuckoo's struggling, and then Kanan daydreams during it and remembers the last time she was at her elementary school, and this is the thing where she went up on stage and passed out, mm -hmm. couldn't sing. We see like a little bit more of like the before of that happening and all that, so she's still having to deal with the ramifications of that, and Shisato quickly picks up on that, basically, because she also knows, like, oh yeah, I remember the last time you sang there. Didn't go so well. Nope. So... They go through practice and everything. They go to leave. Chisato's like, I gotta go work. See you later. And then, like, the other girls get messages. They're like, hey, meet me at the, the takoyaki place. Don't tell Khan on. And they're all like, Whoa. something came up. Gotta go. gotta go. Which is when we realize that they apparently have, like, school-issued coats. Yes. Which happens. I guess we should have realized from the, like, ending. Yeah. But, you know, we're not paying attention, clearly. Well, and they were also just, like, running after each other. So, like, it was, like, one coat after another, and you realize yeah. that it's the same. It's way more noticeable then. And then Connor's just, like, left there, like, Huh? Huh? So, Time they go to, to the... Go to Forbidden Land. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
So they go to the takoyaki place, and Shisato's like, all right, here's the deets, y'all. You let, me, let me tell you about how Kanon couldn't sing when she was in elementary school and passed out. It's real bad. And now we're going back to that place where she couldn't sing. Things could get very dicey here soon, so just be on the lookout for that. Yikes. Be careful. So they keep going through practicing and doing all that sort of stuff, getting ready for the next part of Love Live. They uh, they learn that the next iter- or next theme for the next segment of Love Live is vocal solos. So your group song has to have a vocal solo segment in it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, Conan should do it. She's the best singer. They all just do that stare <laughs> thing. <laughs> So they do that, and then Collins is like, uh, <laughs> So now she gets this thrust on her as well, and she's not doing so well. And the rest of the girls are still like, oh, man, I don't know if she's going to be able to do the, the, the elementary school thing. Uh, this could get real bad. So what if we go sneak away and talk to the director ourselves? <laughs> I'm sure that's fine. So they do that, and then they come up to Conan like the next day, and they're like, "Oh man, we can't make it to the the elementary school thing. Like, I have something come up." And the other was like, "Oh, I gotta work. Uh, I have to go help around the house. Uh, th- my parents want me to help around the shrine." And Conan's like, "Oh, okay. I guess I'll do it myself. It's not really a Liella gig then." And they're like, "Oh, right, but but you should go anyways." Yay! You'll do fine. Don't worry. We'll be here if you need need anything. It'll be all good. And they're basically just like, uh, Conan's just like, uh. Yeah, they had the like decision of like, oh, she can sing because she's with us, but we need her to sing without us. Yeah, so they basically just go like the hardcore route of just like throwing her in gonna- the deep end. Throwing you right into the deep end and see if you sink or swim. No floaties. Because, yeah, like you said, they they realized the whole thing of her being able to sing is because she has people around her. That was the crux of the whole thing when she performed with Cuckoo mm-hmm. originally, is that she could sing because Cuckoo was there with her. Yep. And they realized as well, like, oh, well, she can sing because we're all there with her, but she still really that hasn't gotten over her anxieties, her fear from way back in the day when she passed out and couldn't sing. So we need to find a way to figure out how to get her fixed, I guess, essentially, and write this ship in order to progress to Love Live. Because if we can't figure that out, we're not going to win. Yeah. Which, like, they would still, I think, do fine if, like, they made her do a vocal solo because, like, they would still be on stage with her. Right. But... It would be better if she's confident in it. It would be it would be better if she's confident and they want to make sure there's no, there's no, like, weak links in this bond that they have or this group dynamic that they have that's going to prevent them from going on and trying to win it all have confidence no confidence <laughs> uh so yeah they they that's the way they kind of just do this is like you said throw her in the deep end no floaties Sploosh. um cuckoo goes and sees uh, chisato at the takoyaki stand and chisato is basically out of it Gives her just like a very like five connected thing of takoyaki. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's fine. I'm gonna eat it all anyway. I'm gonna just funnel it in my mouth and burn myself. And she's also just like, ah. ah, sorry, I put too much in there. Kanon goes to her house and talks to her sister. She's like, hey, what was I like when I was little? And she's like, you were annoying. You were just overly confident, wanted to wow. help people. You were like a very excited sports caster. <laughs> But you know, it was it was all right. I didn't I didn't hate it. You had you had a lot of confidence in in others, and that's like a thing that Shisato brings up is that like she wants to be able to fix this fix this for Kanon because she wants to have Kanon be able to give out that confidence that she gives to others and be able to instill it in herself now, essentially. So they go or they go to the the elementary school because the rest of them are like. Oh, we couldn't. We had to come and see if she's gonna be okay or not. Oh no! <laughs> and Kanon's just in the back hanging out, and she sees the the world map that's on the stairs that she saw when she was a kid, she and you know, goes casually where you keep your world maps. Exactly, and goes backstage and basically has a flashback to what happened back before she sang the last time, and 
she gave like this big prep or you know hype speech to the others. Was like, yeah, sing, sing it's cool. Sing's I fun. love to sing. Nothing scary the about of, singing. The rest of them go off and are fine, and then she stays back, and you don't see this in the original, like in the early parts of the episode, but like here when she relives it, she's like, her younger self is like, I'm scared, and I don't know why I'm scared. Starts shaking. And, mm-hmm. And like freaks her out, and that's why she's like basically panics up on stage and passes out and older Kanon now realizes this and is like yeah that was a thing that I had that sucked but now I gotta go up there and figure this out all myself and then she walks out and does a song and it's fine and then just Sato runs out or runs at her and just like spins around her five times and is like yay <laughs> spins around like Kanon must have super of her body strength because she's like holding her while she's spinning. It's like, holy crap. Also, it's so weird because Kanan just like goes up on the stage, doesn't introduce herself, doesn't say anything. She starts singing and is like, oh, okay. Mm hmm. Holy crap, she spins her. They just know who she is. I guess, but like, you can't say, like, hello, I went to school here. I'm going to sing a song for you. No. I have to get to singing right now or else I'm not going to be able to sing. Okay, yeah, fair. Uh, yeah, she performs Watashi no Symphony, which is apparently a song off of a bonus edition of the first single. Wow. So there you go. All right. But uh, yeah, that's basically how the episode ends. They're ready to get prepared for the next installment of Love Live. ba ba bum ba ba bum Let's talk about some notes and trivias real quick. Okay. This week's NHKE broadcast exclusive end card is of Kanon. What? Yay. Yay. Let's talk about callbacks. Uh, we talked about the Neo Mutant Girls callback. Amazing. Uh, like Umi, Ren reacts to something indecent. In that case, the attire she saw from a ladies wear store website. It also, this is a stretch, but I think it's very funny. This is also a reference to a slogan from Daya Kurosawa's Cybersecurity Month poster. Don't always open files or click on links you receive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's... I think it's a stretch, but it's funny. It also funny. Um, reminds me kind of like Rico hiding the, the stuff in the like coin locker. Yeah. This poor girl was, never, it was, was not allowed to get on the internet, and this is why. Yep. <laughs> Have to save her from the bad parts of the internet. She's gonna get so many computer viruses. She is. R- she, she is. She is the Rikiko in real life. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> what happens when you get a virus? Just break the computer. <laughs> Don't use it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, she's a menace. Yes. Uh, next time we will be discussing maybe the penultimate episode. Did we ever check how many episodes are in this? I tried to check, and it didn't say. So oh. th- this is the penultimate or this is the finale. I'm guessing penultimate. Okay. Because, like I said, usually Love Live is 13 eps. Yeah. That makes sense. So I'm guessing penultimate. But uh, next time, we'll be discussing season one, episode number 12, called Song for All. Not just Kanon. Song for All. All. That means you, buddy. You're all. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that next time as we are winding down to the end of Love Live Superstar. Until eventually they'll probably do a second season. Yeah, probably. Probably, that makes sense. But regardless, that's going to do it for us this time. If you would like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SAC.cool so where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like seasonal anime checkup ova you can also find columns and reviews on the site as well if you'd like more from ann ladium go to annladium.com she's got columns and reviews you can follow us on twitter and tiktok at anime checkup and you can buy our books one shining moment of critical analysis of love life sunshine and hot tubs and pac-man on amazon.com so join us next time as we figure out what the song for all is